Welcome to Holly EFI Training Part 16. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at working with our startup enrichments. Our startup enrichments are going to be including things like our cranking fuel and our after start fuel enrichment. Our cranking fuel is going to be used when the engine is in cranking conditions. It's going to deliver a huge amount of injector pulse width to get the engine to fire up. We're going to find it's based on engine coolant temperature and it's also based on demand of fuel flow rate. So depending on what kind of coolant tempo we're going to be operating at, we can command more fuel flow rate on a colder temperature compared to a warmer temperature, and we're gonna find the engine can fire up very efficiently if we have our cranking fuel dialed in right. We're also gonna find when the engine fires off and runs for the first five, 10, or 20 seconds, it's going to need a little bit more fuel than what the main fuel table can deliver, and that's what the after start fuel enrichment's gonna do. It's gonna add a brief fuel enrichment for, again, a certain time period that we can specify so that the engine's gonna have stable combustion and it's gonna be able to catch idle and start to run properly. So we need to take a look at how to work with both of these different startup enrichments in our Holly EFI software. So let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our startup enrichment in our Holly EFI programming. Our startup enrichment is gonna be including things like our cranking fuel and our after start fuel enrichment. The cranking fuel is gonna be used when the engine is in cranking condition, so we're trying to get the engine to fire up. And then once the engine fires up for the first five, 10, 20 seconds, we're gonna be using our after start enrichment to add fuel above and beyond what we're calculating here and we figured out from our main fuel table that give us a reasonable air fuel. We need to stabilize the combustion, so the after start is gonna allow us to do just that, just go in and stabilize the combustion so the engine is gonna run smooth on startup. So let's jump in here in our fuel ITC, and we're gonna move down in here to our startup enrichment tab. This is gonna be where we find our cranking fuel, after start hold off, after start enrichment, and after start decay rate. So we're gonna have a little bit more to deal with in the after start programming, but our cranking fuel is relatively straightforward. We're gonna find that we have this table here. It's just a basic two dimensional table. So this row right here represents the cranking fuel in pound per hour request and the fuel flow rate. And we can see the table here is gonna be based on engine coolant temperature. So looking here at the colder coolant temperatures, negative 40 to about 20 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, we note that the values in the table here are gonna be much higher in the fuel flow rate command compared to values that we're gonna find in the hotter temperature range of the coolant temperature. So this is gonna be where we'd start off the engine or fire up the engine when it's warm, so 180 and warmer, and then this is gonna be when we fire off the engine in the colder state. So we can see here the values are about a third to a quarter than what we find here on the colder engine state. And that's because we have poor atomization and we have what's known as a wall wetting effect when the engine is in the cold state. So um, when we're cranking the engine over, we're going to need to inject a lot more fuel or request a lot more for cranking fuel in pound per hour in order to get that fuel into the engine um, so it doesn't stick to the intake valve and the intake track. It's going to uh, essentially need to prime the engine, so to speak, so that we're going to have the engine fire up as quick as possible. So you'll find that if you're dealing with an OEM ECU, if you're looking at a GM OEM ECU or a Ford OEM ECU, you're gonna find the same kind of trend here where they have a lot more cranking fuel on the cold and cold temperatures and then as we get up into operating temperature, it reduces here drastically. So cranking fuel is gonna be used for 400 RPMs and below. Once we exceed it 400 RPMs, that's gonna be when it kicks into our main fuel table and into our after start enrichment. And we'll talk about that in a second. So the cranking fuel here is gonna be solely used, it's gonna be the, uh, the where it's calculating the injector pulse width from. So we know in our base fuel table here, whether we're in the VE based fuel strategy or the fuel flow rate, it's gonna be taking a look at the cell position we're at in the table here, figuring out what the amount of pound per hour fuel it needs to inject into the engine is going to be going through all the conversions with our injector scaling and sizing, turn that, turning that into an injector pulse width. Now, the cranking enrichment overrides our main table, so the values that we place in here are gonna be the sole determining factor for the injector pulse width. If we take a look here, let's go to our USB link real quick, and let's go, uh, let's do send to ECU. Let's click okay here. Um, we can see right now we're operating at 160. Now, if we take a look, the engine RPM here is 92, so I'd be in cranking conditions right now. If we toggle across- Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.